All right, so the audio might change a little bit. Uh, I do have to add this voiceover separately. Uh, but here's our nice 54 ounce jar, and here's our black cow cow manure. I pressed it into sort of like a hamburger patty. Uh, yeah, but uh, this should work out well. We're basically going to do a Wallstad style jar here. And, but instead of gravel, we're going to use clay and sand. And we're using uh, black cow cow manure instead of uh, compost or uh, soil. So we're going to cover the cow manure with this uh, clay and sand mixture. This will keep it from floating and from releasing any little bits into the water column. Uh, while still allowing our plants to send some roots down there and to uh, feed on this material. Hopefully our worms will get down there as well. I want to get some buggy worms in here. Some tubaflex and some different things. Uh, we're going to use an improvised tool here to spread out the sand a little bit. I don't have the fancy big budget stuff that the bigger channels have. Uh, so for our aquascaping tools, I have to improvise a bit. So we just grabbed a piece of marble with our long tweezers, and that works out really well. This is Bucket Ponds. I love to improvise. I love to upcycle and to use things in uh, new ways. I'm going to add a little bit of sand. This is that same sand and just a few pebbles. Uh, I harvest the sand, the clay, uh, all this stuff from my very own backyard. If you're familiar with the Facebook page, you'll know that I'm digging out a pit back there. Uh, near the oasis for a future pond or maybe another project. I haven't decided yet, but we are harvesting clay and sand and using it in our projects. So for our first plant, we are going to include a, a really nice grass plant. I'm not sure of the species, but, uh, you know, that stuff doesn't really matter to me. Latin names are largely irrelevant. <laughs> but this grass, I have tested it uh, off camera in a jar aquarium of a similar design. And it did quite well, as long as the ends of the leaves were allowed to come up out of the water. So I'm going to drill a little hole right here in the middle. And we're going to get our grass plant kind of rooted down in there. Uh, if you've ever built a jar aquarium, then you will know that planting is simultaneously the most frustrating and the most fun part of any build. Uh, getting your plants in there. It can be a struggle or it can go well either way, but it, did, it is fun. So this grass plant should survive in here quite well, quite nicely. And we're going to add another plant on the bottom. This, uh, this is an unknown plant <laughs> that's been growing near my ponds. And it's uh, very low to the ground, very low cover. I'm hoping that it will survive underwater, but probably not. Uh, odds are likely that this will become a food source for our worms and snails inside the jar. Uh, this plant will most likely break down. And that's fine, you know, this is how we experiment. This is how I've learned uh, which plants that I have access to, uh, which of them will grow underwater, which of them will not. Uh, and, you know, it's a learning experience. Now, I probably should have picked some plants that we know more, uh, more about to better, you know, estimate and better judge the effects of the black cow on the plant growth. Uh, but this is fine. I want to have a long-term food source in here, so our snails and worms will eat these plants as they break down, uh, but I'm pretty confident that that grass will survive uh, for the long term. It happens to grow in very wet, moist areas near the ponds and in other places in our location. So for our first water samples, I have some water from our Bowfront Aquarium, which has uh, endler guppies and tons of snails inside. We had a bit of a planaria problem in that tank, and I solved that problem by adding a few mosquito fish. Yeah, there's a nice bladder snail right there. <laughs> I was really proud of that, though. I know we had some people asking for an update on the Bowfront Aquarium. There's a bladder snail. Uh, but it's a low-light tank, and it's really hard for me to film. It's hard for me to film it. But that came with uh, bladder snails, duckweed, probably some uh, detritus worms, tubaflex, and some other creatures. We're adding samples now from my crayfish aquarium, which we do not show on the channel for good reasons. <laughs> uh, not to be mentioned here. But yeah, uh, this will add a, uh, I, I refer to it as predator cues, but this will add the scent of crayfish to the aquarium. This also comes with some more duckweed and uh, various microfauna, including our uh, paramecium, our small white detritus worms and other creatures. 
and of course more snails. I'm going to toss in that piece of marble here. Uh, this will hopefully offset the effects of that black cow a little bit and give the snails something to chew on when they need a little more calcium. I'm thinking that that black cow material might cause the water to become somewhat acidic and it may release a scent as well, <laughs> which sounds horrible to talk about. But uh, I'm confident we can get past any kind of issues like that. At the end of the day, this black cow material is just ground up plants. It's just compost, uh, partially digested compost. But it should be fine overall in the long term. Now, if you're watching this thinking that you should build a fish tank with black cow material and uh, do a wall stad setup, I highly advise against it. Let me just come out and say that right now. But here's the tank. I'm going to call this day one. It looks pretty good. Uh, please keep in mind that that plant on the bottom is meant to fail. It's going to break down. Um, this is not necessarily a tank that I would want to show my friends. You know, this is an experiment. We are trying to learn uh, how this black cow will affect our snails, our worms, our ostracods, all of our pets. If it's stable, if it works out well, if it releases a ton of nutrients causing algae and our plants to grow, specifically that grass plant, uh, then I will use black cow again in the future. But if it has any negative effects, then we will not. Um, you may remember that we have tested this previously. We built a similar jar using spike rush and black cow. And uh, there it is on the right. Unfortunately, it was cooked by uh, exposure to a very high amount of heat. This is uh, very unfortunate. I was very sad about this. We lost a few tanks when that happened. But there are still bladder snails in here. They are still breeding. And that just shows how tough these bladder snails are. I will try to rescue a few of these bladder snails and put them into the new project. And I will most likely uh, try to rehabilitate this failed project on the right. Uh, with a little work, some new plants, maybe a slight water change, we could probably get this back to a uh, functional setup, and we'll have two experiments running to get a better idea of how this black cow material works in our tanks. Typically, I would use organic compost or something below my sand and clay layer uh, to establish, you know, a long-term source of nutrients for our plants. I'm hoping this black cow material will do that job even better. And I want to be honest with you guys, you know, I've recently gotten, gotten into uh, breeding our large boogie worms, and I'm really, really hopeful that I can get them into one of these tanks and let them find that black cow material that should cause a uh, uh, population explosion. You know, imagine you're a, uh, a boogie worm. You eat muck and dirt all day. You live in the substrate, and then one day you find a chunk of black cow, cow manure. <laughs> as a little worm you should love that stuff that should cause uh breeding and feeding and it should be excellent but here's our main experiment and it does look nice <laughs> i'm not ashamed of that but keep in mind that plant is designed to fail so now we're just going to use our diy pipette which is also known as a turkey baster we're going to use that to uh blow some water down there and to free up any duckweed that may have been trapped in the lower parts of the tank uh, that duckweed won't hurt anything, of course. It will just wilt and become food for the snails and other creatures. But I would like to uh, get it up to the surface. Uh, duckweed naturally floats. If you don't know much about duckweed, um, it's a great little plant. It's actually one of the smallest flowering plants on the planet. And it's uh, pretty cool. I love duckweed. Uh, I use it in most of my projects. It has a horrible reputation in the industry, but that's because it's an easy-to-grow plant. And generally, uh, the aquarium industry favors things that are tropical and hard to reproduce because, you know, that's where you, you get your money. So this is a sample of mold from our boogie worm container, our boogie worm jar that you may have seen on the channel. And uh, there should be some young boogie worms in here. Uh, <laughs> I need a better name for them. Um, when I look online, all I can find is uh, tubaflex. Um, apparently so many different types of worms are classified as tubaflex, or maybe I'm just not reading things correctly, but I injected them down below that plant level, uh, below that ground level plant, and uh, I'm hopeful that they'll get established in here. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer than my other videos, forgive me if you hear a little noise here and there. Uh, this is a good look at the jar. You see it does have a sealed lid. It is not perfectly airtight which means it will allow gas to escape 
and I would not use one of these lids with a wooden jar to build a uh, sealed ecosphere. But in a jar like this, I'm not going to seal it up. You know, I, I can't because that black cow material will release some methane and some other gases. And uh, we don't want a repeat of the uh, explosion that happened some time ago in one of our sealed projects. But I will be feeding these guys with Tetramin fish flakes. Um, I will feed them every day to start with, mainly the snails and worms. And I'm just going to give, uh, excuse me, I'm just going to give them a little sprinkle of fish flakes, just like that. Not too much. Uh, but keep in mind, this is a brand new jar, so there's no algae in here. Um, there's not a lot of readily available food. So I'm going to feed them every day for about seven days. And uh, that will encourage everything to get going, to get the snails to start breeding, and to, uh, you know, establish uh, the container, to establish the jar. Once things get rolling, they'll be eating that plant on the bottom. They'll be eating any algae that appears in the jar. And we should end up in a pseudo self-sufficient jar aquarium type of setup. I will occasionally feed them with fish flakes. Uh, normally I would offer cucumber slices, but in a jar like this that's just been set up, I don't want to overfeed them. So I want to ease it into the situation. And of course, when you're feeding fish flakes to a tank that has duckweed, you have to kind of get it down into the water column. But I am pretty happy with this. This is day two. And the jar looks fine. Not a problem in sight. Uh, I can see some of our snails cruising around. We have a couple larger ram's horns that made it in here. And I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, the ram's horns get quite a bit bigger than the bladder snails, and uh, in my experience. And they might not do too well in here, but I'm hopeful. Uh, we should be okay as long as we keep things nice and clean. Now, I am doing a, a series on this on this tank, uh, a full series here in this video, meaning that I'm going to show you every day, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, so on, until we get to day seven. And I want to show you just how things develop in here. I want to offer you a, a good video. You know, I want you to see this tank uh, develop and how it, how it changes over time. That way, when you build something like this yourself, you'll kind of know what to expect. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good, though. I'm not uh, unhappy with this aquarium. I am a bit nervous to see that plant on the bottom start to fail or on the off chance that it may grow and um, surprise us. It does happen occasionally. You'll be surprised which plants out there can adapt to an aquatic situation. But our snails are in here. They're scooting around. They're breeding already. And uh, things look good. Keep in mind, I have uh, exposed these snails to predator cues, which means uh, when they smell a crayfish in the water, this scares them. It scares them. It's a very primal, instinctual thing. They don't have uh, intelligence like we do, but they are being frightened into breeding more often. Um, exposure to a predator, you know, all they can do, their only defense is to make their shells a little thicker and to uh, breed, you know. Um, you can try to survive by just making more of yourselves, and that increases your chances of being eaten because there's so many more of you. So predator cues cause the snails to breed rapidly. I'm also exposing them to outbreeding, which means that I've added snails from like three or four different locations, three or four different separated um, breeding populations. I talk about this a lot in my channel, uh, but this has the effect of also causing the snails to breed more rapidly. Somehow or another, they can detect when a snail is from a for, uh, foreign population, a snail of the same species, and this causes them to reproduce more rapidly. So here we are. This is uh, day three, I believe, and the jar hasn't changed too much. We've been feeding it every day with some uh, tetramin fish flakes, and we still have the other jar there next to it. It looks nice, though. At this point, um, this is when most YouTubers would cut you know, oh, hey, look at our cool jar we made. Give me 10,000 views. Thank you. See you later. And you would never see it again. Uh, but this is Bucket Ponds. You know, we do stuff differently. I'm going to show you every step of the way here. And uh, just a little forewarning. The jar is going to look a little rough over time as that plant in the bottom begins to fail. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, we can make pretty things all day, you know, and I do make some pretty nice jars to share with you guys. But uh, for this project, this is an experiment. You know, we're learning things here. We're trying to develop a better world and uh, a better 
uh, method for our projects. I'm really hopeful about this black cow because I know it's absolutely loaded with all of the essential nutri nutrients that our plants need. So, if things go well, we might have a, another trick in our, our, uh, <laughs> our well, what would you call it? <laughs> Another trick in our pocket to um, increase the growth level of our plants in these jars. And, you know, it's something fun. It, it's really rewarding to me to see things just explode, you know, to just, just take off. Like, oh man, when you can turn one plant into 12 plants and then you can grow them even further, that's really cool to me. And that's one of the main things that we do here. Keep in mind, guys, I'm not a scientist. You know, I'm not a biologist. I'm not a botanist. I don't claim to be. I never went to school for this stuff. I'm just some guy like you, you know, you can watch the bigger channels and they can pretend to be those things, but uh, that's not me. So here we are, day four, not much difference in our jar here. I uh, have been closing the lid occasionally, uh, off and on. It's not airtight though, so it's not going to hurt our snails, but occasionally bladder snails will try to escape from your container and it is good to have a lid for that reason. I'm going to add a couple Pleco wafers here. And, uh, yeah, these are for algae eaters, uh, pleca, plecostomus. I can never say that word, <laughs> uh, but they make decent, uh, snail foods as well. And we're just going to knock them down in there. Honestly, I probably overfed. I added like three algae wafers, but I know our snails will tear these up and our other pets love them as well. Here we are day five. And yeah, the pleca wafers were a mistake in the size of a container. Uh, they have caused quite a bit of cloudy water, and um, there's a lot of debris floating around from the uh, pleco wafers, the uh, algae wafers. But that's fine. You know, uh, as long as things in here are still alive, then I'm not too worried. Now, I'm going to show you something that I rarely ever do here on the channel. We're going to do a water change, and uh, that's because I want this jar to succeed. It's, it's, I'm very invested in this after losing our wine jar ecosphere which I am going to rebuild soon, but uh, I'm very invested in this project working out, and I want to show you guys exactly how we get to the point where we have a nice jar. Um, it might not be until, you know, three or four months in the future when this jar comes into its own, when it fully develops, but we're going to remove some of that debris. We'll probably end up taking some of our microfauna as well, so we're going to just inject that into one of our other jars there in the background, and, uh, yeah, we're not going to worry too much. I never throw away water from these aquariums. Um, by uh, including all these different samples from several different jars, different ponds, and different aquariums, we're establishing a strong amount of bacteria in here, a strong, diverse level of beneficial bacteria. And uh, yeah, I think that's very important. We're going to add another shot from our uh, boogie worm jar to hopefully get them started in here. If they didn't take from the last injection on day one, they should take from this injection here on day four or five. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm pretty hopeful here. Um, this cloudy water situation will subside. Um, we've changed most of the water and we'll allow it to sit for a while to settle down. Um, this is much longer than my usual videos. I'm not sure if I like making such long videos. It takes me a lot longer to produce. And I kind of run out of things to talk about <laughs> during the video. But I want to entertain you guys, and you know, I just want to hang out with you. There's a good look at one of our snails there, and they are very active. This black cow material is not harming them at all. And here we are. This is, what, day six, I believe? And that plant on the bottom does look pretty rough. I can see where some things have been chewing on it. I can see it melting here and there. Uh, but the grass leaves are fine. And uh, I'm sure there's a scientific explanation, but the grass plant there in my off-screen experiments, off-camera experiments, um, just on my own, that grass plant uh, only survived when the leaves were able to come up out of the water. So I'm sure that has something to do with respiration or, or something, but I'll have to get in there and pull these leaves up out of the water a little bit. That plant on the bottom is definitely melting, though, and that's fine. It ultimately, it will become a, uh, a food source for our snails and worms. It will break down. It will become mulm, essentially, M-U-L-M, which will act as a food source for our other worms. And uh, all things considered, we're going to have a beautiful 
densely populated aquarium here in time. Now our snails are mostly chilling near the surface of the tank, and I have noticed a slight scent up there, uh, but that mostly dissipated with the water change, and uh, I'm pretty happy about that. So if, if you are building a traditional fish tank, a Wallstad fish tank with black cow, cow manure, um, let me know how that goes. I'm very curious, but um, you can expect a scent for the first few days. Um, just do a quick water change, and that should solve your problem. Um, while working on one of my other aquariums, I happened to find a pretty nice big ball, a, a big colony of tubaflex worms in the hang-on-back filter. And this is day seven. I thought, why not finish this tank off with a nice uh, colony of tubaflex worms? I think it's really cool. When I first got into these projects, I wanted tubaflex so badly. And there they are. Just a ball of worms falling into the tank. Uh, I'm sure they'll go far. They'll probably uh, separate, get back up to the surface and do their thing. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. If you look closely at the jar, it might look cloudy, but those are in fact small creatures. Those are paramecium, thousands of them. And this is officially a Bucket Ponds Jar Aquarium at this point. Um, they're just one of my one of my pets in the creature collection. Here is one of our larger worms. This is not from that colony of Tubaflex. This guy is a little bit different. Uh, this should work out to be one of our buggy worms, or he might just live in the duckweed. It's hard for me to um, separate the different types of worms that we have, but uh, he's fairly large. He's at least an inch or two, and he's very active. He's looking for a food source or somewhere to uh, roost, uh, to, to hang out. And I'm very happy to see that. I love our larger worms. I wanted them to. We have so many goals here at Bucket Ponds, and when we can accomplish them, that's great. You know, like, oh man, I really want Tubaflex one day. We went out there, we caught some, and we have them now. Oh man, I want some larger worms. We went out there, we caught some, and we have them as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but it's very uplifting and, and fun. And uh, here's a look at one of our uh, red ram's horns in here. We have red and brown ram's horns in here, as well as tons of bladder snails. Um, you know, guys, I'm just so happy. This jar might not look perfect, but as an experiment, it looks like black cow can be useful in these jar aquariums. We can make some wall stand style projects with these jars. Uh, guys, I just wanted to mention that just recently I saw some people on some online forums talking about bucket ponds. And that's so cool, man. Um, to whoever was commenting on our channel in that thread, if you're watching now, man, thank you. That's really cool. Thank you for promoting the channel. We're up to like a thousand subscribers, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out the channel for more content. Uh, not all of my videos are this long. Uh, let me know what you think. Should they be shorter? Should we make, you know, more parts, episodes? I'm down for whatever. But here's the top of the jar. We have uh, some grass plants sticking out. We have tons of snails laying eggs up here, and things are wonderful. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Have a great day.